figure you scraped the bottom of the barrel that day. We're rolling. Already back at Clam it. Pro Day. Another season of the Ice Team Podcast. What better way to kick it off than at Clam Pro Day? So if you're watching, you know how we do this. Uh, last year we ran through 19 episodes, Drew. 19, yep. So this is our 20th episode, and we thought, hey, it's Clamp Pro Day. We're unveiling our new products to all of our pros. Everyone is coming in, getting excited. We're going to try to rifle through as many pros as we can, give them all a couple minutes. We have 400. We're going to get through about yeah. 20. What you can't see is there's a line of them yeah. right behind the camera. They're so. piled in. So. It wraps around the building. Yeah. Uh, so we got yeah. Mr. Anthony Larson is our first victim. Hails from Wisconsin. <laughs> yes, give sir. us a fun fact about Anthony and what you're excited for this winter. You know, I am beyond pumped not only to be here on Clam Pro Day, but to be on episode 20 of the Ice Team podcast. Thank you so much for having me on. Yep. Awesome. So wh- what do you plan to target? What, what's your what's your one bucket list realistic expectation this ice fishing season? Just to make it. Just yeah. to make it. <laughs> I, live, I, work, I live and fish on Mississippi River, pools five through nine. Okay. It gets intense out there. We run hard. We play harder. Yep. And... Uh, you know, we just want to do it. We just got to get her, get her going. First first uh, bait you're dropping down the hole this year. Oh, that's tough. Um, probably probably panfish. I'm thinking yeah. the uh, the new the new Tika Flash, man. Ooh, that thing's okay. hot. Yeah, fancy. That thing yeah. is hot. Fancy, yeah. fancy, fancy. And how long have you been on the pro staff, Anthony? It's been a while. I feel like Guess. I'm, I'm just going to shoot off the hip because I don't think no one really knows. There's been some administration changes yeah. here and there, but I'm thinking 10 years. Yeah, I, I know it's been 10 years. Yeah, so. yeah. Awesome. All right, brother. Well, go take somebody else. Get them in here. Tell them to come hop in. Get in the hot seat. Send, and two, we'll keep send two of them in here. Yeah. Let's have a couple Send the next two here. guys in here. Let's get yeah. those lanky boys. I like oh, it. Gosh. Yep. Thanks, Anthony. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Yep. Thank have you. a great safe and season all. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Awesome. Yeah, we have... Uh, 350 people yeah. here today or if, more. If Sponsors, through, pros, media. If we get through 10% of that, we're crushing it. Yep. We got two more maybe people coming in. Yep. We got to see all the new stuff today, which is super exciting. I got to meet a lot of cool people, some that I haven't met, some that I've only seen a couple times. They're in from all over the country in Canada. Oh, boy. Who drew, oh who drew the goodness. short straw here? We got two two new guys. You're going to speak right here to the, Slide the front this end way, of that. Hunter. Tuck in. There you go. We have know. Pat Elbers and the one and only Hunter Lanky here with us right now. Boys, what we're doing is telling everybody where you're from. Give us a fun fact about yourself. Maybe something about this ice fishing season. Have at it, Pat. Go. Pat Elbers, clam protein member from Lakeville, Minnesota. Love All to right. chase crappies through the ice. And my fun fact, I am going to hit 10 bodies of water this hard water season that I have never fished before. I, I love like that. that. It makes it that much more sweet when you learn how to catch them on a new body of water. I agree. Hunter, your turn. Hunter Lanky, Clam Pro staff, uh, Elk River, Minnesota, and probably the new, uh, what's the one? Uh, the new one. Tika Flash? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hunter fishes in some ice fishing tournaments. I know that. And uh, has done very well. I've caught some big fish. I've oh, yeah. seen you catch 10-inch bluegills. So I know you're capable yeah. of catching giants. And fun tip about Hunter, we get to see him a lot. Yeah, he works yeah. at Culver's. So yeah. the C represents clam and Culver's. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one question for you, Matt, since Hunter's here. Who has better hair uh, and mustache, me or Hunter? Uh, Show it to the camera. It's... <laughs> It's close. I think Drew's got a little thicker, but yeah, there's an age go. discrepancy. Yeah, Hunter's sure. like 18 years old, so yeah. maybe in like 10 years, we, we draw it again. It's a tie. Yeah, so, good hair, Hunter. It was close. It was close. But, well, thanks, guys. It. We appreciate Thank you. you. Really do. Thank you so much. You. Go take two other people. Pat, Hunter, there you go. Thank Let's you. Go. That was a solid question. The <laughs> hair and the mustache look. Well, Hunter, you know, for 18, though, if you, if you saw Hunter about a year ago... That's a drastic improvement. Oh, oh no. no. Yeah, Who we, is this? We, we get Amy Munsinger and the one and only Sobe. Check, check, check. Mike, check, check, check. check. One, two, one, two, one, two. Oh. Here's the camera. Oh, I don't know. What do I do with my hands? Would you, you say it's here? It's, you everyone else had them underneath. Hang I don't on. care. How yeah. does my hair look? Horrible. Mm. Hands look good. <laughs> Boom. All right. Sobe, Amy, where you're from, where you're from, have some fun. You got a few minutes. Go. Go first. I'm Amy Munsinger. I'm from Elko, Minnesota. Um, just got a social media award. I'm Ooh, pretty yeah. proud well, of that. Well earned. Well, well earned. earned. Yeah, uh, crazy. Been out fishing and, yeah. and enjoying the summer. 
excited for ice it was a no-brainer too amy honestly i was like man amy like corners me at the state fair to like make (gasps) make me take pictures of her relevance and everything like (laughs) no brainer no brainer well we gotta we gotta promote everybody that we love yeah i I know right awesome i dig it no it's been a great summer did a little skydiving a little uh little uh, i I just casually yeah i just did a little skydiving that's what i'm saying dude did you skydive soapy I have skydived before, but not this summer. <laughs> not this summer. <laughs> oh, oh, man, that's crazy. Craziness. Looking forward to uh, our ice show. Oh, yeah. I cannot yeah. wait for that. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. Just to parlay off what Amy said, well, my name is Sam Soby. I'm from Shieldsville, Minnesota, kind of southern, south metro, mm-hmm. just like Amy. But right before we came in here, we just talked about Amy's considering starting a podcast of her own. And just cool. to really highlight just female anglers and just females in the outdoors. And I don't think there's a podcast out there that really f- – fills that yeah. void and i was like that's a great idea so absolutely yeah well played I now you're thinking be. so now your social media award is evolving into a podcast as well yeah See, what, what would you call it yeah uh, uh all amy off outdoors the cuff names podcast. go outdoors with amy outdoors amy amy, amy outdoors amy outdoors amy, awesome. amy andretti amy andretti Mudslinger. Mudslinger. Outdoors. Oh. <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> we'll have to come up with that one, Sam, yeah. for sure. Well, we appreciate you guys more yeah. than you know. Thank you so much. Amy, congratulations. You've earned thank that you, award. Thank you. Sobe, love you as always. Sobe is killing it on YouTube. You probably don't need to know. You already know. But I loved, actually, your creek video last week. Really? I did. Because yeah. we all grew up fishing creeks and yeah. walking around. One question, though, before I let you go. Yeah. Was that anywhere near where Jack got stung? <laughs> Come on, give us the dirt. Semi close. Okay. Semi close. You got to tell that story. Fair, fair enough. Uh, uh, one more, one more question for Amy about Sobe. What yeah. is his uh, percent odds of shooting a deer tomorrow? He's going bow hunting. Good juju. Oh, you can be real though. Wow. I can take seventy-five percent. Oh, yes. that is insane for if bow it hunting. happens. Let's if go. it happens, I'm giving up. Let's to Amy. go. Nice. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate yeah. you so much. As All right. always. All right. Take thank someone you. else. Hey, hold on. The last thing. Matt, Matt's son skipped a frog under a bridge by my house, hit a, hit a beehive. He got chased down the road about a mile. Jack ran super fast. He got stung. He's really scared of bees. That was the story there. Now it's off. All right, thank you for having me. Standard day with the Johnsons. Standard day with the Johnsons. That is a true story. Wow. Yeah. Love it. All right, who we got next oh, here? Mark and Randy. Let's Come on go. in. The original walleye champion yeah. is in the house, Mark Martin. Randy from Iowa. We got a little bit of a demographic Ooh, difference in a good way. That. What did he do with just that? A, just a little bit. Yeah. So Mark <laughs> does a ton of stuff in the world of fishing. Uh, obviously, his prowess is claim to fame is catching walleyes. But schools, oh, you're yeah. doing tons of schools. You're doing all kinds of stuff. That's the commonality here a bit. You're doing kids' events on the ice, too. Mm-hmm. He's doing schools on the ice. Tell everybody kind of where you're from. Quick tidbit or fact and let her buck. Uh, Slide up to the mic, too. Yep, okay. right there. Twin Lake, Michigan. Uh, been doing uh, the ice schools for 34 years. Started out, uh, you know, Gary Roach. Started here in Minnesota okay. on Lake Winnipegosh with Linder and Gary Roach as my mentors. And they finally just said, hey, take it wherever you want, Mark. And I took it back to Michigan, and, and uh, it really turned out good. I mean, yeah. I've been happy about it you know so i'd been professional fishing for 43 years so 33 of it i was uh doing uh, the school so had a lot of fun and we've we've met some awesome people through you and your schools i mean we have other pros that you brought to us that help you at your schools right it's been awesome one of which now lives in florida steve barry oh, yeah. who is not at pro day <laughs> he's down on the beach right now with his feet up Guarantee you. <laughs> Guaranteed. So keep away from them storms, Steve. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. And Randy's from Iowa. Randy, tell Ooh. us about yourself, where you're from, what makes you tick on the ice. Oh, all of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm from central Iowa. Mm-hmm. And I've held ice fishing events uh, for stunted yellow bass at this uh, kind of a northern central lake. Okay. Uh, the DNR has got involved. They use my ice events to weigh the fish, see the tagged fish. And out of about 12,000 stunted yellow bass, there was probably only maybe 100 fish recovered that they tagged from different year classes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So now last winter, they wiped it out with chemicals, and they started all over. It's wow. crazy. Mark, hmm. real quick before I let you guys go, what's your biggest walleye ever? 
14 pounds, one ounce when I was 12 years old. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Wow, it peaked early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then after that, it was all over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Randy, your most memorable fish on the ice. Which one stands that would out? Probably back at Ice Roads. Yep. When Jim Hudson. With, was, with the late Jimmy Hudson. I yep. caught about a 23 inch largemouth bass. Ooh. Jesus. Ooh. He took a picture of it and told me to stick. It was cold. Yeah. It was about minus 12 that day. Yeah. And he oh. said, keep the fish's eyes below the water. That While sounds like camera. Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like Very Jimmy. Very important. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate you more than you know. Mark. <laughs> Randy, love you guys. Appreciate awesome, guys. it. Thank Go take you. somebody you. else. Go have some fun. Learn about some products, and we'll chat with you guys great. again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So outs- fourteen pound. Well, I'll say outside of this room, there's how many oh, stations? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many breakout stations do we have rolling right now? We have ten stations. Ten stations. You have to all. learn about all the various fish houses, yeah. tackle reels. Oh boy. Oh God. Cover models. Cover models coming in we were just joking right. with these two these brewer clan here with tate he can't figure out he wear the headphones Jeez. but uh you know tate has his driver's license we now, determined matt and i that this cover he's gonna get so many girlfriends now well back at school matt what kind of vehicle is tate driving He's driving a uh, 2001 ford f-150 oh he's got is a truck navy blue and cover is it model the one i know it is not navy blue it's oh black nice Nice. You know the coolest thing about it? It had a, a ten year old, five gallon bucket of molasses in the back of it when we un, <laughs> when we opened up the nice. tunnel, tunnel cover. Nice. Is that's not a bear hunting. Is yeah. that just stuff you find in Bemidji? Yeah, normally? probably, that's probably a, from another bear hunter. I'm yeah. Guessing. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, fun fact about Tate, I believe. I don't know if you still play Fortnite, but at one point, weren't you like one of the best Fortnite players in the country? Lie a little bit. We're talking about a fi- we're on a yeah, fishing totally. show, totally. but you were very good. I'm pretty good. Yeah, I know. At one point, <laughs> you even went to like a different state to compete. Right? Am I wrong? No. Okay. See, I'm, I'm not making this up. We Either my kids are lying to me, or or uh, so. Not only do they love the fish and look good on covers, but dude can play video games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my question for you too: If there's one lake that you guys could ice camp on this year, not for you specifically, but just for the entire ice fishing industry, what lake are you going to for ice camping? For ice camping, Leech Lake. Leech, really? Because of pout? Because of everything. Yeah, yeah, you can catch fish all night long. You can catch fish during the day. You can go. You can bounce around from your campsite. Yeah. Clamp site. Clamp site. And uh, you can catch anything and everything. Yeah. That's a good answer. All right, I, I I can respect that. I was gonna, I thought you were gonna say like Red or Lake of the Woods or something, but you know, Leech, let's go. Okay, it's going down. You each have boxing gloves. Who wins? That wouldn't even be close. He'd win. Okay, that was wow. Quick. The golden yeah. rule. You Matt, can, Matt the old man always t- wins. Matt was a hockey player back in the day, and I think threw down a handful of times. I threw down a time or two. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Well, Brewers, thank you so much. We love both of you. You guys do an awesome job. Looking forward to doing some fishing the second weekend of December again. Yes. We always come up that way and do a little fishing. You're going to join us. Don't let it go to your head, but may people sign that cover. Nice work. Thanks, guys. Awesome job, guys. Yep. yep. That was awesome. All right, so we've got Love the cover shot. Iowa. And Tate found out today when he walked in the door. Matt kept it a secret that he was on the cover of it. So we've seen Iowa. We've seen northern Minnesota. Michigan. Yeah. Michigan. Yeah, we got now. Oh, oh, Joey coming in from North what Dakota. Let me call you that. Look, he's making sales right phone. now. Salesman. He's, I got a <laughs> podcast happening here. Yeah, Mr. Pashik and Mr. Hey Adam. Guys. Paycheck. Paycheck. What up? What, what up? What, what, he knows what I meant. Uh, I first met Joey working the Fargo Ice Fishing Show. That's correct. And it was your first time with us at Clam. And after about four hours, I remember talking to others on our team, and I'm like. This bro can work a show with us anytime because yeah. he can sell water to it well. And then he tells me what he does for a living, and he's a salesman for oh, the most part. Kind of, yeah. I, yeah. I own my own welding business, yeah. so I'm, I'm oh. selling stuff yeah. all the time. Well, yeah. I have a snowmobile that's just taking up space <laughs> in my garage that I accidentally bought the other day, and it might need a little bit of welding repair, just saying. Uh, so you two. I'm who, in the market. Who you are, okay. where you're from, fun ice fishing fact. Have some fun with it. Go ahead. So Joey Paycheck, I'm from uh, Fargo, North Dakota now, originally from Southern Colorado out in the desert. So we didn't really have any ice fishing, but 
relatively new to the sport, probably, I don't know, been fishing probably 15 years now, ice fishing, I should say. Um, yeah, one thing is I really want to focus on this winter is clamping. Yeah. I, I want to go camping on yeah. the ice more. Uh, we did a little bit last year. Um, my wife and I have got a five-year-old that we want to get into that. And he's old enough this year. I think it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Less of a, like, oh, Dream what were we castle. thinking? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But these these uh, hub houses are so big that you've got room. They, they can have some stuff to keep them busy and occupied. And mm-hmm. yet, warm. we got the floor. I mean... Yeah. We we fit thirty five people in that X eight hundred. I'm like, what is going on yeah. here? That was awesome. It the just clown car. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> Keith Cavias came out and he's just smiling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. very very impressive. Adam, Matt. go ahead, buddy. I'm Adam Andler. I'm from New Berlin, Wisconsin. Grew up uh, fishing on a lake not too far from me. My grandma lived on Little Muskego. Okay. So I've been out there since I was like five years old. My dad used to take me out there, and we would sight fish in the shack, and I thought that was the coolest thing, watching the northern and bluegills and everything swim by the hole. And that's what got me hooked at a young age, and I still love sight fishing. It still gets my blood pumping, and that's one thing I look forward to doing every year. Okay, you guys each get... To target only one species the rest of your ice fishing life, which one is it and why? Joey, go. Definitely walleye. Okay. And why? Uh, They can be so finicky, but then just in a flash, they can change, and it's just a swarm. It's it's so fun. Fair enough. Adam. I love crappies. I love crappies because you can find them pretty much anywhere, whether they're shallow up in the reeds out deep in the basin, you can find them anywhere depending on what time of the year, and they're a lot of fun to catch. Fair awesome. enough. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Joey. Thank you, Matt. Matt. Appreciate it. Nice job, fellas. Go grab thank two you. more victims for thanks us. Thanks a lot. Go have some Grab-up. fun today. We appreciate you Sounds coming good. out. Great thanks to be for here. Having you us. Yeah. Go thanks. clam. You got it. Let's go. The ice nice. awaits. The ice awaits. Heck yeah. Now we got. Uh, a buzzing crowd. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Might be on the ice very soon. Hopefully. You're thinking when? Hopefully be on the ice within the next 10 days. So we got another guest hailing from Colorado, right? Yep. Let everybody know who you are, where you're from, and then touch on what I just mentioned about possibly ice fishing in the next 10 days. So I'm Tyler Ray. I'm from Fort Collins area of Colorado. You know, typically we're on ice absolutely by Halloween. Tip. That's crazy. You know, right now it's looking like within the next 10 days, we're going to be able to get on ice. We're going to be up around 10,000 feet in elevation and get up around tree line and get on some stock trout. So you'll be chasing trout. Um, like when you get ice in October, now how deep of water are you on? Like it, all those variables come into play for us here on early ice. Like deeper lakes usually don't freeze up as fast. So what are you looking at when you have ice there at elevation and what kind of body of water are you fishing? So a lot of times we're, we're looking for beaver ponds okay, and anything on the north side of the slope. It's shaded all day. And anything that gets sun, you got to be off it by about 830 in the morning because okay. it starts wow. getting soft. Okay. So it's absolute imperative. We have two people. Risque. Yeah. Float suits. Float suits. We have a rise. We take the throw bags with the throw ropes, picks. Ice picks. Yep. 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 And we're only getting out into about four to five feet of water because it's early and we're not sure where a spring might be Got it. Sure. in that shallow water, why that beaver pond staying full. So there's a lot of things that we look at before we just walk out on it. A lot of spud bar, a okay. lot of spud bar action. So I got one question for you before you cut you loose. Being from Colorado, I think where you live is a bucket trip for a lot of us. Yep, yep. But being from Colorado, what's your ice fishing bucket trip? I would have to say probably Devil's Lake. Okay. Devil's. Yeah. yeah. Not Cascade? I've been to Cascade a couple times. I know. I was yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So but, Devil's Lake with Zippy or Jason Mitchell. Yep. It's, you Sweet. know, we don't get a whole lot of walleye action out west, so we have to drive east to get to that. I mean, we've got perch. We've got lake trout. We can get all the crappie, everything like that, but to get a little bit farther east to get into some nice walleye. Well, Devil's Lake, Zippy, Jason, if you're watching, I know Jason's in the building right now. Connect with our boy. Do a little ice fishing. We'll Dude, out. thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Go take somebody else. Ice fishing in possibly the next 10 days. You heard it.
Pay attention to social media. Tyler Ray. See what's going on. Who's next? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Barrel of fun coming in here now. Holy smokes. Yeah. Oh, this should be quite interesting. It should be. You got Shelly and Scott. You guys all know who they are. I probably don't even need a mic, do well, I? Well, you'll want that so you can hear us. Turn that mic, yeah. right, so we can Shelly says I probably won't even need a mic, will I? No, she doesn't. Yeah. I don't. Scott, Scott agreed. <laughs> I know. That's... So, S- S- Shelly and Scott, you guys know. Other way. Hop on. Let people know there you where go. you're from you're and maybe a yeah. fun past fact or fishing story you have for on the ice. Scott, go ahead. Well, uh, I'm from Oak Grove, Minnesota. Um, you know, one of my, I guess, a fact or just uh, one of my better uh, recollections of an ice fishing trip yeah. that we had last year was our, our Baker's Narrows Lake Trout I trip. knew it. Yes. That's, I knew it. Yes. I knew it. I knew yes. it. I knew it. Yeah. You know, when you can pull a 43 and a half inch lake trout through the ice, a 25 minute battle, you know, it's just like, it, it's addicting. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my word. It's like, yeah. That 16-hour drive didn't bother us at all. No. So it's... No. And you were social media famous after we yeah, posted yeah. the, the picture, Good and bad. Because it was such a big <laughs> trout that yeah. we had everyone call BS on yeah. us. And we let it ride. Everyone's like, Photoshop this and that. I loved that you did that. Like, a little you know bit what? of confrontation yeah. goes a long way on social media. Oh, this man. is oh, a yeah. real fish. Yeah. yeah. You had video evidence of yeah. this fish being caught. Right. And you let people... Play yeah, the warrior game you know, on keyboard, but we it can, was, let's yeah. just blame Shelly for that because I, I know, I, photo, and right? I will. I'll take the fall. I did take that amazing photo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, I mean, I did mention, you know, we probably shouldn't use that one, but you know, it was real. Um, yeah, it happened. It was a great photo under under the trying to get that fish inside the house. We were fishing, caught it outside. You know, just trying mm-hmm. to protect that fish. And just, you know, snap pictures quick, quick, get the fish back. So it was all just and happened there so was fast. a lot of adrenaline there. Yeah. There yeah. was oh, a I lot of adrenaline. I imagine, yeah. yeah. So. Shelly, you go. Yeah, you're from Oak so Grove, I'm obviously. from Oak Grove, Minnesota. And wow, I love the sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from Oak Grove, Minnesota, and I've been fishing with Scott. He really got me into ice fishing and ice team and It's to watch the evolution of it is what's on my mind and my own evolution. Uh, Like, just look at us last year. We're we're evolving together. All of a sudden, we're trout hunters. Mm -hmm. And we never were before. Uh, uh, Bluegills and and then went to some walleyes for a while. It's fun to switch species up a little. uh, That It makes it all new again if you're going for a different species. So that's, that's what's on my mind when you... All right, for each of you, I got a question for each of you, and then we'll cut you loose. So everybody obviously knows we're at Clam Pro Day, ice fishing, yada, yada, yada. Both of these fine people are very, very diverse in open water scene. Shelly runs an excursion business. Let everybody know how that works. So escape excursions at the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. Uh, It's beautiful. This is the inland sea. This is big water. I've always been a boater. So I take people to the Apostle Islands on adventure tours. I love fishing, but I always thought, you know what? I think there's more people out there that like adventure Mm -hmm. than fishing if you're looking at the whole population of Earth or the world. I agree. And I get customers from around the world. Uh, One of my favorite trips to give that people want is taking them to Devil's Island, power boating them out, and then sticking them in kayaks. And they get to kayak through these ancient sea caves that Mother Nature created. It looks like a natural water park. It actually looks like Disneyland created this. I've wow. seen that on social yeah. media. Yeah, yeah. That it's pretty, pretty cool. pretty epic. Awesome. It's amazing out there. It's, yeah. And Scott, yeah. Scott's also a professional walleye, walleye fisherman, fisherman in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fishing yeah. all over the place. Maybe let everybody know. Uh, somebody, let's talk about your favorite tournament memory in a boat. Uh, you know, the, the thing that I, I fished the aim Wally series with my son, you know, and that's one of the bigger things that sticks with me the most is being able to get in this boat with my son, you know, mm-hmm. five weekends out of the year. So, you know, just to talk about that, it's like, you know, a lot of times you just kind of separate as you have, what do your kids get older? Yeah. And stuff. So it's like, my memory is, you know, it's just taking that time and fishing with my kids. I was with you this spring yeah. when Cody caught a rock. Remember yeah, that one yep. on Mille Lacs? We yeah. We're that. snap jigging. He's like, I got one. And you're like, I think it's a rock. Yeah. And we're like, it's not fighting. Sure as heck. We grabbed the clam net and boom, had a nice rock in the boat. It yeah. sounds like Cody. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank no. you to both so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah. These are our, our breath on our pro staff. Both Scott and Shelly have been with us for many years. 
and uh, looking forward to the years to come. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, well, thanks, guys. So thank you, guys. Somebody else, tell us who else is going to come up to the hot seat. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yep. Take care. That's pretty cool. I, I want to go on the escape excursion. I want you to. I really do, Matt. Anytime, I yeah. will squeeze you in, your family. I'll, your wife, your, it's a family affair. Yeah. Love it. I will make it a point to try and do that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Drew. All right, we've got quite a few people on here already. Who's going to be up to bat next? Yeah, Scott's being modest. He catches piles of big walleyes. Oh, yeah, here we go. Karin Olsen from Shields is in the house. So we're not just having fun today with our pros. we got a lot of our great partners and friends. Karin is with Shields in Fargo. Why don't you hop on, tell people... I'll what do you do? This chair is there. really low. There you go. <laughs> oh, what do you do for Shields? I don't know why Shelly was sitting so low in that chair. <laughs> and then go ahead. You have the mic for a few minutes. Have some fun. Awesome. Well, thanks Thanks for doing this. This mm -hmm. has been a ton of fun. Thanks for the invite to, you know, to, to crash the party and, and such. But uh, so I'm the marketing leader at the Fargo Shields store. Guessed. Oh, heck oh. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Attention's off me now. <laughs> Um, and part of my work, I have the community outreach team, the social media team, which is what we're doing today. We're doing a little takeover on Fargo Shields Outdoors, which okay. is a ton of fun. Um, so if you don't follow, you should. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just the ability to you know chat with the pro team about what it means to be a partner to a retailer has been a ton of fun. So thanks for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just just peeping it and taking uh, taking all the notes that I can on what's new for 2024. I love it. Joining uh, Karen is uh, the one and only Jason Mitchell. You guys all know Jason, which is a great connection because they're very entwined with shields jason's been one of our original pros with us a long time tyler ray who was on five guests before the both of you <laughs> from colorado we said what's your bucket list trip and he said devil's lake perch walleye jason mitchell oh, so jason uh let everybody know but they all know who you are first things first from. flip the mic around the other way i did the same i did no, the yeah, same yeah, sorry go. about that does that yeah. sound a little that bit sounds that sounds perfect. phenomenal <laughs> maybe i i think it'd be fun to have jason say as a, as a young angler, I know you've been fishing since you were tiny. As a young angler, what was one of your favorite fishing memories that probably truly catapulted that bug for you down the hill? You know, I, I think probably when I look back, it shocks me sometimes how we would go through hell and back just to try to catch a fish. And what I mean by that is I remember uh, it'd be like middle of January, Minot, North Dakota, and I didn't have an ice auger, so I made a hole with a hatchet. And it started off about four. Of course, of course you did. Like Jason yeah. Of what course you call? did, Jason. No, and I'm not like kidding. Hatchet. It was like three feet wide and across. And then at the very bottom, there's a hole about three inches in diameter. <laughs> 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 you know, or, yeah. or uh, just, uh, you know, uh, just our stuff, our, our equipment back then was so bad, you know, yeah. and uh, like the flip over, you know, we didn't have the flip over houses. Uh, we had the homemade four by eight, you know, the blue tarp and plywood. And, and looking back, I mean, back in the day, that was great, but they were so heavy. And I remember uh, being by myself with a two-wheel drive car, dragging that thing by foot across Lake Audubon. I mean, like just like a physical exertion that I can't even fathom mm -hmm. today at 18 years old. Like yeah. the stuff that we did just to, and then if we, and we, when we caught fish, we were just so excited. Yeah. You know? I mean, there wasn't any information. There wasn't any equipment. Um, I would ride my bike to Broadway Shields and Minot, and back then the ice fishing assortment was smaller than this table. Mm -hmm. You know, Berkeley had a Northern Light spinning rod. Uh, I mean, none of there, none of this existed. This whole this whole industry that we see today, none of it existed. We made our own spoons because, I mean, none of it with Bruce Bonzer. Well, yeah, I remember, I, remember uh, I had a, a willow leaf spinner blade, and I made a spoon. I had some like glow in the dark tape on it, and. Uh, caught all kinds of fish on this thing it was kind of like the the precursor to the leech flutter sure. spoon oh, back in the day sure. but, but but 30 years ago see you, jeremy and um and, and when i was in high school everybody called me mountain man because i trapped or hunted or fished or whatever it's kind of like a derogatory thing because yeah. you know uh, but so they called it the mountain man special <laughs> i would have i mean lumber lumberjack so i got a question for each of you before we cut you loose now both of you live in in, for, in as far as like your profession in kind of different worlds, right? Retail focused, mm -hmm. fishing focused, TV show. Perfect world season. What does it look like for each of you um, in terms of ice fishing? What would ideal conditions? What do you want to see happen the next four months? What do you think it should look like? Go. 
Karen, go ahead. Uh, first thing I want to see is I don't want to see snow until after Ice Fest, but I want it to be yeah. like 12 degrees so that we can make ice so that that first weekend that everybody's getting ready to fish, they're stopping at Shields Ice Fest. Mm-hmm. As Shields I- Ice Fest, um, my preference would be the Fargo one because that is mine. Yeah. Um, but of course, we've got them at a lot of ton um, of local stores. And so I, I don't want to see snow until Ice Fest is over because I don't want to deal with it with the tent in the parking lot. Yep. And then just the ability to have a clean winter, but a cool, win- you know, a, a cold winter yeah. um, just to have good ice safe ice um you know for the anglers out there yeah i guess that's kind of what i want to see is i just want to see people being able to get out and do it again i yeah. feel like the last couple of winters i've had great fishing but i know a lot of people if they had like a hard-sided fish house or they have a just a, a pickup where they don't have the best tires on they're sitting on the sidelines watching because yeah. you can't get on the ice you know we've had so many winters lately where by you know by christmas time you can't get out to your fish house or you can't get to out to your spot, you know, without, you know, specialized equipment, whether it's tracks or snowmobile, what have you. Yep. We need a winter where uh, somebody can throw three kids in an Astro van and drive out to a group of spot. 100%. And, and they catch still a make of Astro vans? Well, you know what I'm saying. Right? <laughs> I think so. It's like a soccer mom somewhere. Yeah, the devil's like <laughs> there's <laughs> to come home. He's got yeah, a hatch. So. Oh, man. Uh, so one you thing, know, too, before I let you go. November 17th and 18th. And 19th. Three-day Fargo. And Fargo Shields. Yep. They can see both of you there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So kind of you can get deal. your photo yeah. with both <laughs> of us during Fargo Shields so Ice Fest. You can go to Good Fargo cop, Shields, bad cop. see Jason and Car in there, say hi, give them a hard time, and uh, embrace the ice season. Both I want to say one, thank you one so thing, much. too. So earlier today when everyone was packing in the warehouse, Karin, you had people like just piling in this x800 right yeah and i'm we like did, who is yeah. doing this like, you're like this what is, is going on like, who is but, that girl you know when you're like doing like thinking about marketing like this is a viral idea mm-hmm. right and you get those ideas i'm like this is a freak this is a viral idea and like i'm like caleb let's let's film this but i didn't even realize you were filming but i'm like I, oh it makes sense we have a marketing <laughs> person here <laughs> yeah shout out shout out to matt schneider on my team yeah. fargo shields outdoors we've yeah, got that post job. coming up for uh for later and the answer I mean, is at least 35. 35 at some, least. Yeah, we've had some, you know, some, some full-grown some, men in yep, there. Yep, some corn-fed <laughs> corn <laughs> potatoes. Yep, no, yeah. it's, yeah. yep, absolutely. So at that least 35 awesome. in the X800. And Shields has a 1,200 this yeah. year too, right? Yeah. So holy yeah, smoke, that's a that thing exclusive. is a hey, monster. Oh. 55 people in there. Yeah. Well, we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll stay tuned. We'll do that one during there Ice Fest. There you go. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. Thanks, Appreciate guys. Appreciate it, Karn. Can't thank you enough. Go Mavs. Go Mavs, Go Mavs, yes. Both Thank you. Both of us have our alma mater homecoming this weekend. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Mitchell, as always. Mm-hmm. What's a man you got? What, oh, what are you guys talking about? Maverick, Mankato. Yeah, yeah Mankato oh, State hanging. University. Yeah. You guys yeah. both went to Mankato yeah. State? That's where I did my yeah. grad degree. Really? Yep. yep. So I'm a Bison first and a Maverick second, and they did yep. not have a good hockey team when I went there, and they do now. They so. have a great Ooh. hockey team now. Yes. So, I yeah. kind of did a tour of North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> and on the next Ice Team podcast, we'll hear about that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Grab two other people and send them on in. Yep. Found every bonfire spot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, oh my Jason. God. There you have it. We are going to develop a Jason Mitchell hatchet for next ice fishing season. We need and to have just a Jason, Jason Mitchell Jason, movie. Jason's going to demo it. Like a signature series. Uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh, geez. we need to have like a movie where it goes back in time with jason mitchell and his youth just to see what it'd be like that'd be entertaining yep, on. i think uh to go back to see jason mitchell and his youth would be kind of scary probably that too yeah next we got brennan and todd uh, i've known todd for a lot longer than i know brennan well one brennan's only 19 18, 18 years old and he's like seven foot one he, Jeez, man. He's huge. Todd, Todd's been one of our original pro staff for how many years, Todd? Uh, we're closing in on close to 20 now. 20 years. Yep. And he's, I, one of the stats I always throw out about Todd, one of many awesome ones, is I think you always have been known as the ice angler that travels the most. Yeah. Um, most season, I'm uh, right around 10,000 miles. Could be a little more, a little less. Mike. And um, uh, seven state licenses and Canada. That's why Brent and I are doing a show. Yeah. Because of clam, yeah. ice team, ice fishing in general. That's what brought us together. And yeah. his father, um, their house on Rainy Lake, they live in town, but yeah. they got a cabin in the woods. And yeah. the door was always open. And we started fishing almost 10 years ago. Yeah, pretty close to that. Yep, catching crappies in the basin. Yeah, big ones. I'm jealous. So maybe let everybody know quick where you're fr- each of you are from. And then, uh, yeah, tell one of them fun facts. Maybe tell a story about 
10-ish years ago when you first met and some of the fish you caught, if you remember them? It's been a long time, but I'm sure I can figure it out. But Originally from Fort Francis, Ontario, which is just north of the border. Mm-hmm. And 10 years ago, he dad offered to come up and come fishing with us on Rainy Lake, and we started catching close to 14, 15-inch crappies on Rainy. Yeah, it's nice. Been, always been eventful going out and catching those bigger fish. I love it. So uh, it's quite an experience to go back because to get to the cabin, it's in the bush. And yeah. there was one time, I, I, it was probably the 24-foot enclosed trailer, I had to park it several miles away, and either we take the truck, and at one time we had to snowmobile back into the cabin and then just kind of living off the grid. Kind mm-hmm. of a neat experience, you know, mm-hmm. coming from Illinois and, you know, living in suburbia. And yeah. Here we are, you know, cutting firewood to stay warm and, and cook our food in the cabin. Yeah, where yeah. we are, it's... So every time I want to go out fishing, it's probably five, six mile sled ride just to get to one of our spots. Really? And some of the times we're it's out, an adventure. it's one of the coldest, coldest days I've been out is minus 40 fishing with no house, no nothing. We walked out and fished out there and spent wow. four or five hours out there. Yeah. What's the That's biggest crop you've ever caught? To date, 15 and a quarter. It's a bit, and, but they're, it's a different type of fish up there though. Just yes, so people is. know, like that 15 and a quarter was over two pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes out of 30 feet of water yeah. compared to some places down here where it's, it's an old fish. Yeah. 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 You ha- have a much bigger crappie than that. Yeah. There was uh, I've seen it. Yeah. 17 and a half. Yes. And Jake, he's not here today. He's in the army and, yep. um, but he had a 17. Um, mine was three pounds, two ounces. And his was, I think two pounds, I think 14 or 15, and then I was guiding a guy on the same body of water in Illinois. All three of these fish came from Illinois. That was 18 inches. What's Jeez. the state record in Illinois? Uh, it's a four. Um, a lot of those now crappie, especially in Illinois, because we have white and black crappie, yep, yep. they cross, and you get a hybrid, hybrid an F7, you know, yeah. unless you know what you're looking for. Yep. You know, it, It's kind of hard to tell. Yep. So you do get those crosses, especially yep. in the public body of water in state parks where there's both, and mm-hmm. then when you... You know, you catch the elevens and all right. Yeah. When you catch Hybrids, that donkey. Yeah. They're like ligers. They just like keep growing. Ligers, yeah. 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 I see one of your kids right there, Todd. Uh, Connor. Yeah, yeah. He's a little shy. He and, got and bigger. Was, yeah. I wondered how tall his dad was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think the other guy that's standing over there. Yeah. His dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he plays football, right? Uh, Connor, yeah, yeah, he's in high school. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. Yep, I think I've seen it on social media. So, Todd, this winter, uh, before we cut you loose, what trips do you have planned? So, we're about 48 days, roughly, uh, till we start off. So, almost the last 10 years, on Thanksgiving Day, I start ice fishing. That's when I officially start. And then I usually fish with Gens, and then from there, Upper Red Lake. And that's the, the first trip out of the box. And then it just continues, and we chase ice, uh, whether it's Idaho for Cascade Giant Perch, Lake Erie Walleye. Uh, last year it was Winnipeg. And then, you know, we just chase ice. And the latest I've ever fished with Dave, it was May 5th. And even and we had the snowmobiles um, around Otter Tail. We still had the sleds on ice, and that, that was Dave's. Dave will drive a snowmobile till he puts it through the ice sometimes. Oh, yeah. He is always ice fishing. It's crazy. Like, when you think about it, he, he leads the pack, honestly, for oh, yeah. these big trips and everything. He's the man. You, that year, you, if I don't remember, if I remember right, you fished seven month, different months. Yeah. Seven yeah, months in a row, you ice fished, yeah. November through May. Yep. And there was a couple years, That's even crazy. two weeks before Thanksgiving, we were on Upper Red. It was yeah. one of those freak years. But then there's other years at the end of March, as you know, living here in the metro area, where you're done. It's gone, yeah. You know, and then I'm on Lake Erie in the boat. Yeah. Chasing walleyes. Brandon, so. what's one of your uh, most memorable fish catches? Uh, probably going out on May 1st, walking out, catching 15 pluses right yeah. out, back to back. And walking through, you fall through to your knee and keep on going. So you fall through in five feet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, no big deal. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, top crust layer is always a sketchy part later yeah. in the year, but yeah, yeah, got to make sure you know your ice and walk out safe. Yeah, safe well, guys, first. thank you so much. We appreciate both of you. Uh, Todd, I bet you this kid loves you. I know how well you do with people and educate. What people may or may not know about Todd is he has given every seminar and almost every function that I can think of, dating back to Hudson's Ice Roads, original ice team universities, current ice team universities, sport shows, you name it. You've been a great ambassador for the sport. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks so, for having us. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Give us two more victims. 
Thanks, guys. Two more victims, man. 10, Jesus. 10,000 miles. And he's not kidding. I think that's being modest. I think he had years where he's driven 15,000 miles for ice fishing. It's crazy when you hear these, like, trips that these guys do across yeah. the nation. You're like, how many more years can these guys? Like, they've been doing it forever, and they keep doing it. Dude, we got some righteous dudes rolling in right oh, now. You got geez. Mr. Dave Karp and Tony Freund. This should be awesome. Let's not wow. break the audio, oh, boys. Boy. Here we go. All right, so, I no longer have the best mustache in this team podcast. So, <laughs> once again, so he <laughs> had, point, he, point. He, yeah. <laughs> he looked at me and said, Matt, Hunter Linky was sitting there, and he goes, who's got the best, better hair and a better mustache? I'm like, I got to give the nod to Drew. Let's go. Well, now I. yeah, his pride has been broken when Dave Carp just walked in the room. Yeah. So, okay, Dave Carp, Tony Freund, let everybody know quickly what we've been doing, where you're from, and maybe some fun, cool ice fishing fact that you don't think anyone knows. Dave, go ahead. Uh, Dave Karp, grew up on Lake Minnetonka and Mound. Uh, currently reside in Shakopee. Um, oh, a fact that nobody knows. Kind of stumped on that one. Or a fun fact. Negative 30 is cold. <laughs> I have a fun fact about Karp, kind of. I remember the UPL on green, I think. And I don't even know what I was doing. I was just taking pictures for fun. And You were freezing. You, Karp, I don't think you caught anything that day. And you almost kind of gave up because, like, you broke all your drills. And you're just sitting there. And I think you're just fishing random holes. And I'm like, how's it going? And you're like, not good. I'm like, why? He goes, well, drills are broken. Haven't caught a fish. But I'm still here. Yeah. So yeah, my, you didn't give up because you're still out there, but that was a pretty funny situation. Well, as soon as you walked away, I gave up. Um, <laughs> yeah, camera's off. I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a tough day. Um, back then, I had my daughter fishing with me, mm-hmm. who was yeah. 16 at the time. It's about right. Yeah. Um, so my drill broke, and yep. I didn't want to break rules. Everybody's friendly. I had people yeah. offering me their drill, Tom Dobbins, mm. and and. Uh, Travis uh, Adams, but I was like, no, like we can't, like we're friendly, but I didn't want to take somebody's equipment and break a rule. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, if my gear doesn't work, I don't want your gear. And it was thirty below, and, it was and really I had cold. frostbite on my thumb. It that was, was a ice cold white. day, man. Yeah. By ten ten thirty, I gave up. I went to Zorba's, had pizza. Well, you and, hang out with us, and I hung out. And yeah, yeah, that's right. We all pizza. I give mad respect to guys who do ice fishing tournaments. Honestly, like yeah. I'm hardcore. Love everything about ice fishing tournaments, but I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tony, Intense. Tony helps us at the UPL, but does so many other things. Tony, let everybody know where you're from. I'm Tony, fun fact. Tony Freund from Hanover, Minnesota. Kind of grew up there my entire life. So a lot of local area lakes there that I'm always on. And I'm kind of that guy that if something breaks, call Tony. True. I guarantee he's got a solution. True. Duct tape. So who does Tony call when Tony breaks something? I, I usually have a chat with myself for okay. a while. Okay. And uh, if I can't come up with an answer, I just go, well, let's see what happens. So, Tony, how often do you talk to yourself? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so Some, t- Tony, I need expert advice a lot. <laughs> Tony, I love Tony. I love all of our pros. Tony has helped us so much the last couple of years. And I mean this every single show setting up, taking down, Mr. Line putting my the kid in the garbage winder. cans, <laughs> line, spooling reels, you name it. Always has a, do you ever get mad? Yeah, but you don't see it. I've never seen you mad. Have you ever seen Tony mad? No. Is that, Life's too short to get. Crap. I've never seen you frown or get mad or upset at one thing. I, I used to get mad more than I should have. Yeah. But then I came to a realization. What's the point? It didn't fix the problem. It didn't move anything it forward. It just prolongs the It solution. just yeah. prolongs it. Whereas, oh, hey, you know, this broke. All right, fix it and move on. All right. You know, so. I remember last year on Leech Lake when we were doing that photo shoot, and it was it was blizzard, and, you know, we're getting off the lake. It's dark. If you, do you follow Rut Daniels on Instagram at all? He's like mm-hmm. a hunting spoof kind of character. He's hilarious. Yep. Yep. You looked like Rut Daniels riding your old sled off the thing because you're standing with your your butt up and you're up, up like this, looking over your handlebars. <laughs> I'm like, what is Tony doing? <laughs> Literally stretching out my back because yeah. it was spazzing. <laughs> yeah, I got a question for each of you before we cut you loose. Now you've got a chance to see all the new stuff at Clam Pro Day. You both have been on our pro staff for quite a while. Of the new products this season, what's one product you're each the most excited about? Go, Dave. Uh, the automatic 
setter. The predator, um, predator that, tip up. That kind of sticks out to my mind, but also the clam lock. Just mm. the, the versatility of it from my four wheeler to now my wheelhouse to how you have it displayed with Vexlars and graphs mounted on it. Um, just the, I mean, it's such a simple product yeah. but with so many uses. Um, Absolutely. I mean, I take my rods from my wheeler into my hard check, into my trailer, and I just keep hanging it on a clam lock, and it's it's just kind of a, it's just a fun, easy product. I, I dig it. Yep. I, I dig do the it. same thing on the snowmobile to the hub shack to the mm-hmm. garage. It's mm-hmm. You might cold. like the cup holder, too. I saw the cup holder. A cold beverage. Right? I like that. Yeah. I like, I like I that. I see that so. in Tony's garage. So, Tony, what about you? It's going to be, it's three items, actually. Okay. I can't pick a favorite. That's fine. It's going to be the Tika Flash, mm-hmm. um, just... That's going to be a dynamite little bait for crappies. The upgraded Spooler Elite. I'm a huge fan of the Spooler Elite. I've Agreed. loved that reel since I first saw it. And having that larger arbitrage is just, it was needed. Mm-hmm. Definitely needed. And then, of course, the max entry doors on, yep. on the hub houses. I mean, I've got the six, the X600 Ice Team. I am so looking forward to using that this winter. Yep. So. Yep. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thank I you. love both of you. I know we're going to see both of you a lot this season. Well, certainly. Um, you're local. You've been a breath of fresh air to our team. Appreciate you. Go grab us two other people. Sounds Will do. Yep. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, Dave, guys. Tony, thank you. Dave does have a better mustache than you. I know. I'm sorry. Just give me a couple of months yeah. or years. Or yeah. Oh, boy. We get Oh, this God. is a three pack right this here. It's all right, everyone cheek this way and we can K- fit y'all in. Oh, D. Grab that. What do you do? There's, There's a chair Danny over Vu's there. You can grab in the house. Yeah, what do you do? DJ Danny Vu. DJ. What's up, boys? So we had these guys on one of our podcasts last year, the Knocked Out Doors crew. You got uh, Mao, Danny, and Andy rolling in. Yeah, give this to Andy. Yeah. I you're can gonna hear have to share. Yeah, you guys got to have to share. I'm not too old. I can hear Matt from here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, kind of yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> Gra- Grandpa. He's full Grandpa of wisdom. Sure. Grandpa Mao. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa Mao. Yeah. You got it. Nice, nice. So we've got a chance to know these three guys, get to know them more over the. We've been fishing. I think, I'll unless slide you down each that way, tell everybody everyone slide this way, where so you're from and a fun fact. But before we do that, a few of us were talking yesterday about our excursion. Last year in the snow oh, dogs. God. Oh my God. Sloppy <laughs> slush we nightmare. We all went out. The five of us plus, plus Thane. Who else was with us? Uh, Can't remember. Logan. 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 Oh, it poor was little an Logan. Absolute literal mess. Four or five inches of ice, 10 to 12 inches of absolute mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. gravy. <laughs> it was gnarly, gravy. but we have fun. All right, Andy, Andy, Mal, let everybody know maybe each of you where you're from. Uh, fun fact, and then let's talk KOD for a minute. So, what, uh, Mao. Yeah, Mao Lee. I'm, I live in Lionel Lakes, so yeah. I've been here pretty much all my life. Love it. Yeah. I'm Danny Vu from Buffalo, born and raised in Minnesota all my life. Yeah. Andy Cho, uh, born in Mankato, live in the cities just north of Minnetonka. Fun fact. You guys forgot about a fun fact. Um, I don't know. I Google count backwards. I count beans for my real job. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> Fun facts. Uh, team no sleep. The true, valid. <laughs> that, that's fact. You should elaborate what that means. What does that mean? Fun fact. I am the world's greatest grandpa. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, said, can, we, can you say I that again? Grandpa, 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 Jesus. When I said Grandpa world, Mao, I meant Grandpa Mao. <laughs> yeah. We're not just making fun of him. He's the world's greatest grandpa. True. Yeah. So, KOD, let our listeners, I mean, they've seen your episode already, but this is a new season. We're kicking it off. Refresh our crowd on what KOD is, and then maybe, without tipping your hat too much, one cool thing you guys have planned for this ice fishing season. Mao, you can lead. <laughs> what KOD is? KOD is knock outdoors. We're knocking outdoors, breaking borders, and just trying to get some good uh, diversification <laughs> in the ice industry, right? Yeah. So that that's what it means, and you know, I love Danny it. is the knockout par- portion of it. So he he fishes twenty four seven. He just knocks out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. fishes so hard. Yeah, I'll take a nap. Four claws. <laughs> Four claws. Fish so much to the point that I get home, I just literally knock out to, or even go straight to work and then knock out yeah. and get up. It's like, I think I might have to repeat this all over again. Yeah. You know? our, our joke whenever we go fishing is always, how much sleep has Danny got? Oh, he's coming from you work. Know, and yep. it, oh, I haven't slept time. yet. I'm just coming right here from work. 
You know, so what is something you guys have planned this winter? If, if you can divulge, do you guys have anything cool planned? Any cool trips planned as a team? Uh, what do you got cooking that uh, maybe your fans can appreciate and pay attention to? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just chime in. I think that we want to maybe create some content with more education. Okay. It's real easy just to go fish, 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 but it's hard to slow down you're actually catching fish and having too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> so something with maybe a little bit more education. Got it. Yeah. Makes we sense. Will, we will be focusing a little bit on some of the product lines as well so okay. that we can kind of give a – big hint on what we use for what kind of presentation when we're out in there. Like sure. What, what, what rods and reels do we like to use for Tika minnows or mm-hmm. the new Tika flash or pinhead pros of this size. So it's just stuff that we will kind of divulge the information of how we use it so that we can help some of the beginners on picking the right gear for them. You know, I love it. Yeah. And then lastly, I'll probably say, uh, try to ca- ca- collaborate with other people out yeah. there. You know, Ooh, we went to different okay. states. We went to Wisconsin, yeah. maybe meet up Jason Mitchell. We've been talking about it, but <laughs> yeah. every schedule's been, you know, ups and downs. So we're, yeah. we're trying to make the effort. Yeah. Hopefully, they'll come down. You know, yeah. we'll have a different schedule. And KOD trying to make that schedule. Yeah, it's perfectly. easy It's easy when it's just one person. Right. When you got three people with yeah. busy and, and a grandpa. <laughs> and a grandpa. <laughs> yeah. We got a grandpa. We got a CF. Oh, yeah. we have a non-stop DJ. DJ. Like, DJ. DJ. You can't make the stuff up. Yeah, yeah. These up. guys are busy, but they're ice fishing. Yeah, so, Guys, right. we love you so much, Thank and we mean that. that. You guys have been awesome on our team. We're looking forward to more futuristic ideas. You got Murrin over there acting a fool. Uh, go take somebody else. Get a couple more guys in here. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, fellas. We love clam. Yep. Yeah. You guys are Appreciate great. you guys. Yeah, we love you, Grandpa. Clam for life. Yeah. Let's do it. We're not kidding. Like, if you were on the lake with us that day... We, it was nasty. Dude, we, we, I think I, my lactic acid in my legs is still there, and it's been like eight months. That's a good way to get in shape. Yeah. Speaking of two gentlemen that are in shape, uh, Mr. Lanky, Mr. Gazzoni, here we go. These two guys are two other local pros. We love them. We get to see them all the time. They're like family, Paul Gazzoni, Sean Lanky. So let our listeners know where you're from. Sure. We've done a fun fact, but we did it a few times. So maybe tell somebody where you're from. Uh, your goal, one goal for this ice fishing season. Sean, go first. Well, I'm Sean Lanky from yep. Elk River, Minnesota. Um, been a clam pro for about 10 years, I think. Yeah. It's been a while. About right. So when Matt says in shape, round is a shape. So it I counts. consider I'm in uh, shape. That counts. Uh, I think one goal this year, I'm going to try some clamping. Yeah. So I'm ah. getting a hub. Hunter and I are going to do some clamping. That's this year. awesome. Gonna, Love that. It, you know, that's the one thing I'm going to try. Yeah, you just saw about half hour ago, Sean's son, Hunter. We compared facial beards yeah. and mustaches with each other. <laughs> me me and Hunter, who has the better hair? Right. Yeah. You, it's Drew. not even close, Drew. Yeah. What? Drew, Drew's not not even close. I thought Hunter had pretty good hair. I thought yeah. Hunter's wow. was actually painted it. on. <laughs> oh, yeah. It almost yeah. looked like he dyed it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, uh, his mustache or his fro? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Both of it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, no, if the cat licks it, nothing. Oh my disappear. word! Oh. I've been asking that kid to shave for years. I keep <laughs> telling him once. I keep telling him it's gonna grow back, you know, thicker if you do shave Gosh. that off. And he goes, "Nah, nah. yeah." Hi, yeah. right, my name's Paul. Um, man, I love the whole firsts. I read your article, and um, usually every year I have a goal of bringing out a new person or a new group. Mm-hmm. Um, it, with the competitive ice fishing season that we're in. January and February are pretty much locked up. So Mm -hmm. December and March are great times to bring people out for their first time. Last Mm -hmm. year, I was able to bring out uh, some friends that I actually exercise with on a a normal basis, guys that had had never really experienced any kind of chase. You know, they thought it was you sit on a bucket, you drink a beer. And it's like, no, no, that's not what we're going to do. That's fishing. I'm going to show you what catching looks like. So um, I got some neighbors that have been bugging me to bring them out and, I think that's that's the first thing I'm going to do is try to get Show a big the ropes. group. Yeah. Show them the ropes. Yep. Nice. Now, both of you are involved in all kinds of stuff outside of, like, the Clamp Pro staff position. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul does a lot of stuff with FAM, Future, Inc., Future Anglers of Minnesota. We are going to do a podcast with you in just a matter of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, MN Made. Maybe touch on MN Made a little bit. Talk about how that evolved into FAM. Both of you are tied to it. Both of you have strong roles in it. Maybe do a little spitball on MN Made for a couple minutes here. Yeah, that's, we don't even have time for that, I mean, to be <laughs> honest. But uh, I met I met Sean on the ice. Um, when we were fishing the UPL tournament. He, no, nope, 
I was fishing and you were out there looking for bluegills for a like a dissecting project for a sixth grade yeah, teacher. For I, a teacher at Elkhart yes. High School. Fair oh. enough. Yeah, just a yep. normal way to meet a guy, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and that. so, uh, long story short, we tried to get into the UPL years ago. And at that time, there was a waiting list. And um, uh, Jake and I started Minnesota Made 10 years mm-hmm. ago because we couldn't get into the UPL. And, I was in the UPL at the time. Right, yeah. right. And now it's been 10 years. And Sean and I have actually fished together competitively. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And had a great time and formed a friendship. And uh, now he is going to be a part of Minnesota Made as far as the running the tournaments and the weigh-ins and that sort of thing. So, like that. Yep. Yeah, yep. it's fun. Awesome. I can't tell you how many great people I've met fishing. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing. Yeah. And the competitive, you know, it runs in the blood oh, yeah. for yeah. me. Yeah, right. so it'll never go I'm away. At. No. And I've known not. both these guys for a long I've known Paul for a lot longer than people think. We both went to high school together. He was actually good friends with my brother. So was was well, Ooh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you wow. graduated two years older than me, ninety nine. Yep. Coon Rapids. I graduated oh one. We go a long ways back. I love that fishing brought us back together. Amen. I really yeah. do. I, I, I sincerely mean that. Like, I think you nailed it. Fishing. You meet a lot of great people. Uh, you you get humbled real quick, in all different ways. And it's been awesome. So we give Sean a hard time a lot, but <laughs> man, dude, we, you, you man. know, you know, we love you. You're, oh yeah, 100%. you are part of the family. I have a no. funny, quick little Sean story. So yeah. last year we we're at the Squatch hockey game in Elk River. We support the Squatch. It's a junior hockey team junior. that just established. Yeah, last year in Elk River, Minnesota, we gave them a couple of hub houses. We have clam chuck a puck, you know, at the intermission, and yeah. we're sitting there, and it's intermission. We're grabbing a beer and. Here comes Sean Lanky walking down the hallway. And we're like, Sean, what are you doing here? You Unmistakable know, just, figure, too. Yeah, the guy's awesome, right? <laughs> Same like, it's a mile. clam pro. So, like, Sean comes down. He's like, what are you guys doing? We're like, we're watching this junior hockey game. Yeah. So then next thing we know, Sean's sitting there in the stands enjoying himself, watching the game. And, you know, fast forward and now you're a season ticket season holder. Season ticket holder. <laughs> yeah. And that was actually the first game. Yeah, that I actually knew, and they're actually playing in my backyard. Yeah, so we don't have far to go. It's kind of funny how That's the whole good, fishing, guys. hockey, pro staff circle kind of uh, connects yeah. like that. It's awesome. Hey, you and Addy and yeah, the we're, group got, you we're out there. there and it was a great time. I love watching fun. hockey. It's a blast. Well, thank you guys so much. Yep. Thanks for having Wally. us. Thank you guys. Thank Sean, you, fellas. Thanks, Drew, mate. We love Thanks, you guys. Man. Thank you, Matt. Go Appreciate grab us you. two more. Let's do two more sets. We're going on sure. about an hour. Oh, I see Gens out. Yeah, do two more sets of Merwin. Who's next? Here we go. Mr. Merwin. Scott and part of Rod. This is, <laughs> wow. I figured this is the way I'd only yeah. get on the podcast if I waited in line. Yeah. There you go. So we got two uh, familiar faces to the ice team world, Scott Merwin, Rod Wooden. Um, first of all, Rod, you look absolutely amazing, bro. Thanks. I feel like, like a different person. Not to get weird on camera, but like, how much weight have you lost? About 185 pounds. 185 Dude, pounds. Dude, yeah. congratulations, Thank man. You. Like, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears, That's, huh? Yeah. It's and, a person. And what people might not know, but you will jump in quick. Rod, you rode bike. Yep. Yeah, I used to race in college. Yeah, like like very competitively. Yeah. That was part of my problem when I stopped racing. My metabolism didn't stop racing. So I was yeah. eating all the time. And, you know, as I got towards the end of my college career, pounds just started to really pack on. Sure. Oh. Sir, so Rod and, uh, Rod and uh, Scotty here. Let everybody know where you're from, and let's talk about one thing you remember from last ice fishing season. Last ice fishing season, and make sure that memory is something that you want to build on this season, if that makes sense. Scott, go ahead. Um, I'm Scott. I'm from Osakis, Minnesota. Turn your mic counterclockwise. There, there you go. That. There you Perfect. Go. So, yeah, I'm from Osakis, Minnesota, in uh Something that, that was really cool last year is I, I got to ice fish with my nephews mm-hmm. and some younger kids for the first time. And that was, uh, it's first for me. I don't have any kids, so it's it's a little bit different and than what I'm used to. It made me slow down and, and understand that you got to you gotta teach in smaller amounts. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And, and, I, and I mean, there, if you think about that, everybody's like that when mm-hmm. they get into fishing doesn't matter if you're a kid or you're an adult yeah sometimes we just go over their head and that just kind of reminded me that we yep. have to just slow it down slow and it make down. fishing simple mm-hmm. you know i great answer it's funny you say that because i find myself when i do seminars i keep wanting to get more and more advanced and talk about these latest techniques and tactics and things but a lot of times those people want the basics yep yep and so well they're there for those absolutely and 
you got to not get too far ahead of them because they got to walk before they can run. Yeah. And uh, even though you know a lot of those advanced things, that doesn't mean that, you know, ice fishing being as, as fast growing as it is, um, there's a lot of people every year that are new to it and they want to know those basics. So yeah. I always take at least part of the time of every seminar I give to touch on the basics, but at least to start with, if not the whole seminar, just yeah. kind of depending on the crowd. Yeah. So Rod, where are you from? So I'm from Southeast Iowa originally. I live uh, kind of West Central Iowa, a little town of Stewart, about 45 mm-hmm. minutes west of Des Moines. So Iowa boy. Um, went to school there, got my degree from Iowa State. So Iowa through and through, as long as it's a uh, cardinal and gold cyclones. Yeah. yeah. Not, not, not yellow and black. No, 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 no. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So, you know, last year, this it rises to the top of everything, is, was our trip to Cascade, Idaho. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to build on that this year. We're going back this year. Uh, it's so easy to catch personal best perch there. Um, and it was like a 15-inch perch, which any place else, that's fish of a lifetime. Yeah. But at Cascade, you can do so much better. So that's my goal, you know, going forward. Go back and year. top the 15 inch. Yeah, yeah. Because they're there. I mean, Mike was in our group, and he caught the biggest fish of the day, and it was almost 17 inches. It was a big fish. They're like bass, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird. crazy. It's it weird. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. And, you know, people that know me know my history. They know I used to tournament fish a lot in my earlier days. And now that we've kind of retired from that, we kind of spend our time doing what we call fun fishing. And we just kind of travel the ice belt. And we try to stay on top of whatever the big fish bite is for that season. So, you know, it's been Winnipeg. It's been uh, Cascade. Uh, We'll drive a long, long way just to catch big bluegills if we hear about a a good bite on big fish there, too. That's that's a dream of mine, just to... Just to chase the bites. Yeah. Yep. Be yeah. the bite. Yeah. Just chase so the bite. Spinning off of that, that's actually a great segue. This will be my next question before we cut you loose. So if you are, um, if you can predict the future based off of what you know, where do you think that next big bite's going to be? What's that next hot bite? Like the Cascade thing has taken off. Yeah. We had the Lake Winnipeg walleye. Yeah. You both are very in tune with fishing and you pay attention to it. So let's say in the next couple of years, What's going to pop off in our country, and what's it going to be if you had to predict? Go ahead, Scott. Well, if I if I'd had to predict here in just Minnesota, um, and this is only because I have experience there, I'd pick Osakis because uh, they changed a few things, they changed a few limits, and um, the fish are coming back, and it's going to be good here in a couple years. So when Osakis is good, it's exciting. Yeah, it's very good. So I mean, for Osakis, that would probably be it. You know, I I know um, that. Missouri River is starting to pop off with bigger fish now, and and so I'm a little excited to get on some of that too. Yeah. Sure. So I think this one is already starting to rise to the top. Uh, I know some of our pros have made clandestine trips out there already, and that's Fork Peck. Yep. Uh, the lake trout are ginormous out there. The walleyes are good. I mean, it's it's uh, an adventure just to get there. So it makes it a little. You got to be a little more dedicated and willing mm-hmm. to make that kind of trip. But I think that's the one that's going to rise to the to the top. And, and, you know, even looking westward, I think there's going to be some places like in Colorado and Idaho, some of those places where the ice fishing revolution is really just starting to hit there, right? Mm-hmm. And I think some of those places are going to get discovered and start to come to the top two, just like Cascade, Idaho did. Yep. Yeah. Sweet. Well, you guys, thank you so much. Scott. Thank you, yeah, fellas. Love you. Thank you. Rod, love you. Absolutely. Nice work again. Thank you, guys. guys. We got time for one Scott, more set. Scott, let me hang in, brother. Two more guys and we're done. One more set. Scott always looks like he's such a grizzled yeah. guy, but he's actually a big teddy bear. He, he, he hugs softly. Yeah. We're going to get one more. We're about an hour and three Save minutes in. Oh, my All goodness. Right. Mr. Look, Marriott, why not? Save some of the, best, the best for last. for last. Mr. Marriotti and Mr. Gens to close the off. Captain. To close off our, uh, our little podcast here. We've talked with over 20. I think so, yeah. People. We've heard all kinds of different stories. We've had, we found out Jason Mitchell. I could tell a little Mitchell hole stories. with a hatchet. <laughs> We said, give me one memory as a kid, you remember. And he's like, one time I chiseled a hole with a hatchet. I'm like, fair enough. So they probably don't need to know who you are. But real quick, <laughs> let them know maybe where you're from. And let's talk about your goals, your visions for this ice fishing season. Um, go ahead, Tony, why don't you start? Well, I'm Tony Mariotti. I'm from the Detroit Lakes area, and I get to be accompanied here by Mr. Gens himself. And so he spends a lot of time up my neck of the woods and – You know, really, a lot of my goals are what they are year in, year out, is to try some new bodies of water. Um, You know, check on those lakes that maybe eight, ten years ago, they were excellent, and then 
they had a lot of pressure. Those are the lakes I like to look back in the upcoming seasons. You know, give them six, eight, nine years, and all of a sudden you can get be the first ones out on those bites that were good a long time ago. Yeah, and sometimes could be even quicker than six to eight years. You know, if they get a total freeze out and they can get some fish in there, they grow really quick. Yeah, <clears throat> and you know, my goal is is new water, new states. You know, it's it's fun to go to a new state you've never fished before and, and catch something. I don't even care what it is. I just want to, you know, just say you went out and ex- yeah. explored something new. Yeah. You know, and I always say catching fish is easy. It's being where they are when they're biting is the hard part. You know, if, if you can find where they're biting, you, it, we can all catch them. Yeah. Todd, Todd, we had Todd on earlier today, and uh, he was telling us about that season that you guys fished seven different months in one year on the ice yes november and he said he was on the ice with you on may 5th that year hey let me just interrupt you here i was on the ice that may 5th when dave gens and todd todd not only were they on the ice they pulled up on snowmobiles yeah (laughs) and we had walked out and dave and todd pulled up on snowmobiles yeah yeah that's an incredible season yes it is yeah, and I hope it can be that long again. You know, I will be ice fishing on Thanksgiving weekend. It's just a matter of how far do I have to drive north. Okay. Now, Dave, you've developed, I can't list how many products for Clam, right? You are the, a big reason that this exists, even this day. You got to see, we asked this question earlier, and, and it kind of excited us. All these new products coming. Let's talk tackle. With the new stuff the last several years, including this year, you get three lures to fish three in your arsenal for panfish this coming winter which three are they well you know obviously the number one is going to be the drop kick that's that's my my go-to lure just you know most of the time uh you know the pinhead pro or the pinhead i mean i never had confidence in not be, tipping my uh, treble hook with some bait of some sort and mm-hmm. the, and the pinhead was the first lure that i was able to Constantly go out there and catch fish with no bait. That little blade on there, and you know, it takes a little practice to get that right action on that blade. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm, I'm I had the Tika Flash. Mm-hmm. Uh, I only had one of them last winter, and it, I, the, the Northern ate it pretty quick. Oh, <laughs> bummer! Yeah. You know, they are our best customers. Northern oh, yeah. Bike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know why we're not targeting them more. Yeah, <laughs> valid, valid. Same question to you, Tony. Yeah, I think uh, if I'm going panfish, uh, my go-to has been the swirl drop big fan of the swirl drop um i also like the drop jig xl yeah mm. big fan of the xl and i like to team it up with a, a big Ma- uh, mackie minnow xl i like that big profile especially fish and cabbage for crappies and then uh, to round it out yeah probably that pinhead pro um it's just uh it's a bait that once you get confidence in it truly is a bait that catches a lot of fish and i seem to always have one tied on because when the going gets tough a lot of times I can just bring fish in. Even if they don't bite right away on that, it brings mm-hmm. fish and attracts fish. Yep. All right. I got one last question for you guys before we, we kick you and we wrap up. I think this is a very fitting last question. We're at Clam Pro Day, right? This whole segment, this whole this whole podcast was about getting our pros involved, having some fun. And, and kind of a deep question, but I think you're both good at answering this. What does it mean to be a Clam Pro? What does it mean to you to be a Clam Pro? Um, Tony, I'll let you go first. Go ahead. I think being a clam pro is truly belonging to a fraternity of men and women who share a passion for the outdoors, share a passion for sharing information, and share a passion for fishing. There's a lot more to it than just catching fish. There's a, there's a family feel to it, and there's a the real sense of camaraderie. Uh, you get in a group like this. I mean, we had friends from New Hampshire, my friends from Devil's Lake, uh, Minnesota, all over. I get to run into Dave Gens. Um, it's, it's about being part of a, I don't even want to call it a family. It's like a fraternity. I mean, we are all kind of connected, and I think a lot of these relationships will stand the test of time, just like many fraternities do. Yeah, for sure. Great answer. David. Well, you know, when it started, uh, the fish traps in the early days going to, going to shows, and, you know, some of my buddies were the <clears throat> initial uh, pro, pro staff. They weren't called that then, but, but it was about educating uh, people how to become better ice anglers and, and you know, Clam has carried that on. That it's not about so much selling something; it's teaching teaching the art of ice fishing, and it is an art. It's not all you got to do. Yep, great answers. Well, both of you, thank you so much. You guys thank have you been man. awesome. We love you both so much, Tony. David. Oh, can't begin to thank you enough <laughs> for everything you've done Tony. for this industry oh. and especially for Clam Outdoors. We appreciate you. Let's go have some fun the rest of the day. All right, Absolutely. thank you guys. Well, I think I think we've talked to plenty. 
Yeah. So I think we should probably wrap good. this up. We got to keep going on we with the rest of Pro Day. Um, I'm going to need Gens to sign the Dave Gens fat head that I have yeah. in my office before he leaves yeah. today. Yeah, maybe let everybody else know that's Waden. We've talked to plenty. We're going to wrap her up. Just let them know respectfully because it might be a line. Yeah. A lot of fun. Hour and 10 minutes of chatting. We talked to a lot of different people. Had a whole lot of fun. We unveiled yeah. products to our pros today. Um, we had a great time. Got some great guests. We're going to be doing these podcasts throughout the yep. entire season. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Plenty more to come. You'll get to see mm-hmm. us all throughout the uh, ice fishing season. So there we have it. I think we got to get back to work. Yep. More stuff is happening. Clam back Pro Day. To more 20, work. So back out there onto the main floor. Have some fun. Like you said, Clam Pro Day. Episode one. This is our 20th episode of the season or of the of the podcast. Of the podcast. First season, of the season two. Yep. Let's rock and roll. Let's We're go. Ready for another good time. Thanks. Mm-hmm.